<laughs> Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am Krista Burns, your host at the Nebraska Library Commission. And um, this week, uh, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event where we do um, sessions about commission activities or anything that may be of interest to librarians in um, Nebraska. We have topics presented by NLC staff and we do have guest speakers sometimes. Today we have a mixture. <laughs> of guest and local. Um, we do these sessions every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, and they are recorded as this one is being right now. So if you cannot attend a live one, you can always listen to any of our recordings out on our website. Um, this week is our monthly Tech Talk with Michael Sowers, our technology innovation librarian sitting here next to me. Um, hello. Hello. <laughs> and he goes through just some new tech of the day um, and then also does some interviews, which we have um, today. We have, um, actually I'll let you go and introduce if I want, I can just hand it over to you to okay. tell what you've set up for us this morning. <laughs> all right, sounds like a good plan. Technical, all technical glitches hopefully solved here. Um, as Krista mentioned, I'm Michael Sowers, the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Commission. And here in my monthly Tech Talk, um, I like to cover some odds and ends, but I also like to talk to people who are actually out in the field doing things. And so today we're going to talk about the iPad. Now I got to say I'm I'm kind of like the the guys in the cartoon here. I'm <laughs> not exactly the, the biggest fan of the iPad, but it, it's something that's definitely out there. And in my surfing in the last month, I was reading David Lee King's blog, which I've brought up here, a particular post called "iPads in Libraries: Some Stories." And I was like, oh, okay, let's let, you know, let's see what he's found. And lo and behold, the very first story that came up in this blog post was from Omaha Public Library. Yay! And I'm like, hey, <laughs> I know somebody at the Omaha Public Library. In fact, I know the person who uh, sent in the story uh, by the name of Amy Mather. Amy, are you still on the phone? I am on the phone. Yay! And where are you calling us from today? I am calling you from... Um, Rockville, Maryland. Cool. Okay, so uh, uh, hanging out after ALA, can I assume? Exactly, because you know I used <laughs> to live in Bethesda, so I'm hanging with my peeps for the rest of the week. <laughs> oh, very cool. Great. So why don't I uh, tell us, uh, For we, we have some people uh, not from Nebraska in, in on the call today, and some other folks we had you on uh, Encompass Live before. But uh, could you just for a minute kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at, at Omaha Public? Um, yes, yeah, sure. I am the technology librarian. I have been at Omaha Public Library just over two years. I actually moved from Bethesda, Maryland um, to Omaha. And I used to work for CSA, which eventually merged with ProQuest for about 10. So um, they love Omaha. I love every uh, my entire job. It's really fun. Um, we have a new director in place who's very technology focused. So it's iPads and interesting, um, you know, things that he's picking up as far as tech trends on the way. We hope to have actually a mobile app here soon. So uh, for the catalog. Cool. So lots of fun stuff we're doing. Okay. So, okay, what, what's going on with the iPads? What's, what's, what's the story there? Why, why are we talking about this? <laughs> well, um, okay, here's the story. So, you know, every year, um, this will probably be my, this was the third year that we've had summer reading, that I'm involved with summer reading um, program kickoff. And, and, you know, watching the usage on the back end, you see uh, people signing up for the program, and there's a few, and they kind of like, um, Trick to come in very slowly, and then some reading program is when you see the majority of, of everybody signing up. But we've always had a kickoff party at a park, um, which uh, which to me is like a lost opportunity to actually sign people up on the spot. I mean, it was really great fun. There's clowns, there's dunking tanks, there's animals, a petting zoo, there's a this and a that. But um, they have to, you know, remember to go home immediately and sign up for the program online. So Gary Watson, our director, wrote a grant, a local grant, to, um, to purchase some iPads because of the whole 3G connectivity. Um, it would be, enable us to, like, sign people up on the spot and, um, you know, really 
also make us look extremely cool in front of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, even though our first summer reading program kickoff was canceled because, you know, Nebraska storms, when they come, they come uh, very furiously. So we had to cancel it, and then we actually had it at one of our branches, which we didn't technically need the 3G at that point because we could just jump on the wireless, but we still actually used it because there was a lot of people on the wireless and it was getting hung up. So we ended up signing up probably over 500 kids just on the iPads alone all day long, just, and they loved it. So that's the story in a nutshell. So now I'm actually experimenting. I actually had the iPad with me, so it's kind of an interesting little <laughs> going back and forth between my iPhone and the iPad. It's like it's like tag team wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, can can you give us any details? I don't know how involved you were on the actual grant. Like you know where? What, what, sorry, you know what, what what the grant source was? Who who you got the money from? Do you know? Um, actually, we'd have to get that to Gary, from Gary, but I can email him right now as I'm talking to you, since I do have the iPad in front of me, and see what it says. <laughs> okay. All right. That works. But I don't uh, have the specifics. Okay, so were were these speci these were specifically gotten with the idea of using them for registering kids, kind of on the fly for the yeah. summer reading program. Uh, you're yeah, you're we not. Also see, like, the, go ahead. But we also see, oh yeah, we see a lot more utility, especially like with going out in the community and doing some training. Like if I were going to go to a business and talk about, uh, you know, some databases or even, you know, outreach to any group and say, you know, this is what we have at the library. Um, it's a great way to do um, kind of outreach, you know, mobile outreach, which will be fantastic. I'm actually very excited to start doing that. And it would, I mean, even for story time, I mean, you know, even though it doesn't work with, like, Overdrive and all of that, we do have a problem with that. But there are some books that we can download that would be really fun to do via, for story time, just to, you know, sort of take the traditional and make it techie, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so these are definitely staff equipment. This is not something you're circulating, not something that you're, you're, you're letting the patrons use? No, we are not. Um, it is definitely staff circulated. So, but we are, you know, getting other electronic equipment, like Sony readers. We are um, going to start circulating for um, downloadable audiobooks. So, okay. so that would be something. Mm -hmm. So, what, it, it, outside of the, you know, uh, what you've just explained, which is, is really good in the, the using it as staff, because that's actually what intrigued me was, you know, okay, you've got this device, how can you use it? I, I totally see what you're doing with it. What, what has been your personal experience with the device as, as to usability and functionality, and I'm, I'm assuming you're liking it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I am, but I also have some problems with it. Um, okay. Like for traveling, it's been phenomenal because I'm not like having shoulder replacement from hauling around, a laptop, <laughs> which I appreciate. I mean, you don't have to take it out for security. It's basically like a dynamic, a ginormous um, iPhone. And um, so I do love that aspect, and it's really easy. But as far as, like, hardcore applications, like, I can't, I haven't quite figured out. I mean, I certainly could buy it, but I'm not going to because it's not my device. But I can't do Excel or Word or anything, like, really hardcore um, applications on this. But it's, it's definitely fine if I don't, if I need to travel about and do that. And there's also, I mean, like, for instance, today I had trouble, you know, the webinar. I can't log into the actual webinar because it's not, the device is not um, ready for it yet. So they haven't quite gotten that synced up. So there are some problems. And, um, I mean, it's, to me, I do love it, and if you had an extra 600 bucks laying around and you wanted to buy one, sure, do it, absolutely, and it's fun, it's cool, you get a lot of attention, but 
I'm happy just borrowing the libraries. So yeah, that's I, my I, opinion. Yeah, I keep saying if somebody wants to hand me one, I'd be more than happy to play with it and use it. But you know, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure it's 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 worth my dollars personally. Um, you know, I like my Droid phone. It it does everything I need it to do. <laughs> Um, right, right. And my iPhone actually is that way. Okay. Um, so what, what, what is your, um, have you just found anything just cool like, wow, it does X um, better than anything else I've ever had my hands on or, or other, other than the ultimate portability of it? Um, let's see. Not yet. Um, okay. I think the whole, the, I mean, it's just a beautiful device. I mean, that to me is um, the appeal of it. Like, for example, like, I, I love that I can, the whole Epicurious app, I love to cook. So to me, just having, like, your online cookbook and recipes is fantastic. So the apps make it beautiful. Um, I mean, it's, what can I say? It's it's a really nice, say? pretty toy. <laughs> sure. Hey. Well, you know, to let everybody know, we didn't give Amy the questions ahead of time, so I'm, yeah. I'm putting her on the spot just a little bit here. And I will remind everybody: if you've got a question, um, please feel free. Do we do we have any? Uh, Not, yet. Amy Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you want to ask a question, there's the question section of your interface. You can know, go in there and type it in, and I'm monitoring your questions here, and I can let Amy or Michael know anything okay. you want to ask. Um, so what, what sort of, um, as a staff device, have, have, have there been any policy issues? Um, you know, what, what if somebody wants to buy an app that they think could be used? Is, is, did you just kind of buy them and hand them out to people? Or was there any discussion about uh, policy with, as, as a staff device? There actually, it's, that's a great question. There, uh, we don't really have a policy yet. Like mm -hmm. I have one because I'm in the technology office, and it actually has all of my account information on it. So, as soon as mm -hmm. like somebody else wants to borrow it, and that's the problem with app. It's like because it is very device centric. Like your, mm -hmm. i your your um your um iTunes and your iPod and everything is is very connected to your 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 account. So this is mm -hmm. very connected to my account. So as soon as I had to give it up, I'd have to delete everything, and that would be a little bit of a pain because as soon as I got it back, I'd have to like load everything back on that I've actually loaded. So um, and we don't really nobody's. In the and our system has been like, hey, I need this iPad. So I'm not sure exactly how the policy will work out. <laughs> um, it'll be interesting to see because I think we're just, you know, you know, he just bought it because of he, you know, he wanted to really work this into the summer reading program, and it definitely mm -hmm. um, um, was did very well. And I could see application. So we'd have to maybe figure out like maybe a, a um, kind of a, a, a just an ID and, and maybe an iTunes like a library ID and download stuff so it, it wouldn't be attributed to anybody's personal information but somehow I'm not sure it'll be weird and okay. that's why we can't hand it out Michael so um, that's the thing it's like we can't let get people borrow it because it is that um, you, you do have to be tied yeah, into tied an into. account with right. Apple. We we had a sim we had a similar experience here at the commission. We own one iPod Touch, mm -hmm. which uh, I was using for a while, but yes, was attached to my account. And people were asking, "Well, can you you know just can whoever needs it take just it on a trip?" Like and I'm like, laptop. "Yeah, like a laptop." And you I was can. like, "Not really. Not it, easily. It, not easily. Yeah, you would have to completely erase it, start over again." reattach it to somebody else's account and so yeah that that I definitely could see as an issue so so what's going on with the other five you you have six of them you have one <laughs> I do have one um, Gary has one and I know that our um, um, our um, youth services director has one as well so she borrowed one for ALA so it'll be interesting to hear how she 
um, used it and applied it in, 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 you know, for her needs. But um, we just really got them, so I don't think nothing has really um, been going out to the branches. We, we're focusing on the readers first, and then probably we'll think about how to um, do the iPad. So it'll be okay. evolving as we speak. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the readers will be another session <laughs> once you get that up and running. Yeah, that's, I'm really excited about that. Uh, yeah, that should be really fun. Okay, and I think we have a question came yes, in. Yes, there is a question. Um, Amanda has a question. Um, can you use the iPad to access your catalog and circulation remotely through something like remote desktop? I'm assuming she means like you as like the sort of person or something, not just checking the catalog. Because she mentions remote desktop. You mean the back end? Yeah. Um, um, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. know. I don't actually work that. In, that's not my technical expertise, but I know that I can go in and do website updates from my um, iPad. So um, we, that's, a, that's a good question. That's a great thing that I want to start testing next because going out to the community and showing them stuff and saying, hey, do you have a library card, and signing them up immediately. Mm -hmm. That would be a fantastic be awesome. use for Yeah, them. Yeah, um, I, I'm just kind of talking off the top of my head in, in response to that question. If you have a, a web-based web access to whatever, you should be able to access it. Um, remote right, desktop right. in and of itself, I'm not sure what Apple's support is for that mm -hmm. through the iPad, but like personally, I use a service called Log Me In, which is a remote desktop but via the web. So I would assume that I could use that on something like the iPad because it's, it's just, just a web, web browser. Yeah. Um, so it, I, I guess the answer would kind of be it depends, but you guys haven't done anything like that. Although you've gotten to the back end of your website, you said. So. Yes, yes, but that's through um, just you know a URL and going through like Joom, you know, working out of Joomla. So that's pretty easy. Right. So web access again. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Right. Right. Okay. Well, just like a laptop, anything that's web based, you can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, any kind of like wild ideas as to what else you you think you might be doing with these things? Um, I mean, you know, signing up for library cards, I think, great idea. Signing up the kids, obviously, for summer reading program. Um, kind of any other plans? Huh. Um, I would love, well, you know, because we are working on, I think, you know, Gary's very interested in working with Bootsy, who does the whole um, mobile catalog app. So I and he is working on an iPad app, is what I believe that he said. So I'm very, I think that would be very cool for just iPad owners um, to be able to search the catalog via their mobile device through there. So that to me is very exciting, um, and be able to show people that. Um, I, I'm not, you know, other like applications, it would be great to, uh, you know, maybe do many digital um, slideshows of really cool really events cool that we're doing. That, we're doing. Um, th that might be, you know, for just going out and do some like quick marketing, um, you know, plugs in the community, that might be fun. Um, because I really do think, like, any time that a librarian goes out into the community, they should have one of these. Like, it, it just would be very helpful. Sure. Uh, I mean, it's great, you know, to be present, but it's great to be able to, like, show stuff, like, immediately online, not having to worry about equipment needs and set up. So. Mm -hmm. and, and one thing you just said gave me a question, and, and then that last thing you just said reminded me of a question I forgot to ask. Um, so I'll ask the forgotten one first. Who's paying the bill on the 3G? <laughs> How is that set up? Uh, good question. Well, I actually have to disconnect from it today because it is on Gary's account, and he said you need to disconnect today. So I, that's another great thing to think about because um, I'm fine being on wireless at this point on because I met my friends. I can pick up her wireless or at a coffee shop. But once we do truly go mobile, then it, it will be um, 
interesting to see if we can get just one 3G account so we can always have that as a backup in case that a place that we do go to doesn't have wireless. But I mean, and that's quite possible. I mean, and then we're getting more wired and wired as, as we speak in our um, communities, but mm -hmm. not always, you know. So that wasn't something built into the grant proposal then? Just It was just for the actual... No, it sure itself. wasn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So something for everybody to think of, connectivity charges. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, exactly. And then, yeah. Um, and then you mentioned the iPad app, and, and I'm going to play a little devil's advocate here. I, I know you can search Omaha Public Library via the web. I mean, I've done it. I, I do it somewhat regularly myself. What would be the benefit of writing a separate applic you know, a separate app to do what can already be done on the web? Uh, for, you mean like the catalog? Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> true. It, but it's, it, I, I definitely see your point, but this whole Bootsy app is completely sold me because it's such quick access. I don't have to, um, what, you know, when you go into a web page, you actually have to think, okay, I click there, click there, click there, click, um, and with this, with this application, every it's like one click away, and, and, and it'll have your information, and you can immediately log in. So it's it's basically like a one touch, and then and you are saving all your catalog. You, you know, putting on your books on hold. You know your um, account status if you have fines or whatever. Um, you could connect to Facebook immediately, which I love. That will. Um, part of the whole application. So I think it just makes it easier for that person on the go because if I'm looking at the Omaha World, um, I mean Omaha Public Library website on my iPhone, I mean even though it's great, it's still a lot of information condensed. So um, I would prefer something a little bit more dumbed down and a little lighter than I can do instantly, you know, get to what I need. And I think our circulation will spike as soon as we get this app. I really do. Okay. So so basically it, it, it so basically it'd be like more of a native interface to the device that would just make everything go a little smoother. Right, exactly. Okay. Um, Great. And it sounds like we got a couple more questions yeah. came in. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, it says here that you mentioned that you're having trouble with OverDrive and the iPad, um, but that OverDrive lists um, the iPad is a compatible device according to them. <laughs> Do you, what kind of problems were you, have you been having with them? Um, well, it, it's not the, I mean, I think they, well, first, the new iTunes is a little problematic with um, overdrive so I'm seeing a lot of support actually come in right now mm -hmm. with that okay. and the overdrive app is not it's built for the iPhone and not for the iPad so there's a different and that app does make a difference it, yeah. it does make it does a difference make a and yeah. even though I've tried it, it it's it, it's a little clunky I think it could be um, work a little bit better with you know the technology, so uh, I think it's just okay. Like I mean, I I I feel like you know it's just okay. Like they can they can work on making it better. Mm -hmm. it, it's also my understanding too that with with OverDrive at the moment, it it everything works as as good or bad as it does it for the audio books but not yet for the e-books. They're working on the apps for the e-books to make them um, on the Android and the, 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 I, the Apple products. So, to it, it kind of, um, you know, audio works, electronic text yet doesn't. So, so they're, the right. overdrive is... The is DRM. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the whole Adobe Editions problem and the Flash and all of that. So, <laughs> it'll be interesting what comes out of that. Sure. Um, okay. Another question? Um, yeah, a question from. <laughs> <laughs> a question about does the iPad have voice output? Could a patron use it in relation to your efforts to reach non English speaking people? Using it in some um, 
I don't know, actually. I, That's a good question. I, I do know that I'm some of the... Go ahead. No, you go ahead. You might know more. Well, I, I, I know one thing on this, on the, the iBooks front. So their version of eBooks um, does have a read to you aspect, but mm -hmm. like only if the publisher allows it. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, so it does in an, it does have some text to speech, but I think only in certain applications and then only if certain people allow it. Mm -hmm. um, it it's not a, an accessibility device, definitely. And I don't know about translations either short of what might be built into a particular web site or application. Right. And I'm just looking at the uh, settings here in the iPad, um, and I see a speak auto text, which will correct, um, make auto corrections. And I'm not sure, I haven't really played around with the whole, it's a voice over thing. thing. Okay. Which I'm not sure what it does, to be honest with you. The funny thing is that they just came out with a new iPhone, and I already feel like the iPad is dated significantly. <laughs> stuff they've added to the iPhone. So I'm a little like, uh, I want the iPhone, you know, new one. <laughs> because it doesn't have a video. Like, to me, that was the biggest shortcoming of the iPad. It doesn't have a camera. So... Um, one of the greatest things I would love to do this would be like, you know, um, online you know, video meetings, you know, using Skype or something. So mm -hmm. can't do that. Very, very bad. Mm -hmm. I just would love to have that. Yep. Other questions? And now you have it with the new iPhone, video mm -hmm. conferencing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very odd, their way of doing things. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, yeah. let's <laughs> let's not turn this into pick on Apple. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, Amy, those were the the questions that came in. Is is there anything else you want to tell us or uh, fill us in on? Think maybe I, I maybe didn't ask that you you want to make sure everybody knows about. Um. No, I mean, it, it, is, it, it is a pretty product. I mean, that's what Apple really it does well and designs for is, you know, it, it's very sparkly and lovely, and, <laughs> and it is lovely to travel with. I mean, I will be taking this pretty much with me anytime I'm traveling on business and not my laptop. But I will be curious to see what other apps they will be coming out with that will help um, the robustness of like people who really need to work, work, you know, and not just um, play with it. All right. So that's kind of where I'm wondering where it will go from here. Yeah. Well, you know, definitely keep us updated. Um, you know, love to hear if, if you guys, uh, you know, discover any really cool uh, use for it. We'd, we'd love to know about it and be happy to pass it along. Um, I want to, you know, thank you for, for, uh, uh, helping us, uh, do this today and, and talking to us and, uh, dealing with the slight technical difficulties we had getting this going. Um, we, we were hoping that Amy could actually share her iPad desktop during this presentation, but it was a limitation with, with go to webinar wouldn't allow that. They're, they're working on There's, it. There, as you were just talking um, about great things that could be for it, they are working on their app for go to webinar. It doesn't exist yet for the iPad. So yep. we'll have to wait and do it again. When yeah, happens. exactly. <laughs> um, so, cause you know, I'm sure we'll be getting one of these next week at the commission. So. Yeah. Right. right okay. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again, Amy. I really appreciate it. And, and we'll, we'll let you get back to your vacation. <laughs> Okay, well, it was a pleasure talking to you all. Thanks. Talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Well, just want to thank Emily, or Emily, Amy once again. Amy, uh, Emily's not even in the room. Um, she might be in another room watching us at the moment. Hi, Emily. Um, so I just want to thank Emily. I just, I, I love stumbling over those things uh, and, and finding those and, and just, um, saying, hey, somebody's doing something really interesting with technology. And to be honest, I hadn't even thought about using the iPad in that way. I mean, to, to take it out yeah. with the 3G and signing kids up. And, and 
you know, especially if the kids think it's cool, but it's, yeah. you know, even cool. Ooh, you're going to sign me Ooh, up on iPad. I get iPad. to touch an iPad. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I have held one. I touched one. And I was mm. impressed. And uh, my first reaction was, though, I, I thought it was a little heavier than I expected. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> but uh, my yeah, solid piece. But anyways, that's you know that's uh, I I don't have the five extra five hundred dollars to get one. So there you go. So with that, what we'll do is um, kind of switch gears here and talk about some software I found and some news I found. Um, we will provide links to everything we've talked about today and the stuff I, I'm going to talk about now uh, with the recording. Uh, you're welcome to write down that URL, but we will actually be posting them on a slightly different uh, Commission Delicious account uh, for our archive. So you will be able to find that, and everybody who's mm -hmm. attending will, will get that email with yes. that information mm -hmm. in it. So I'm just going to kind of work backwards here with some stuff I found as of uh, literally last night, uh, and then work back kind of through the month, things you might want to be aware of. And if you have questions about any of this, please, you know, just mm -hmm. submit them in the Q&A, and Krista will, will uh, ask those. Um, this first one, which I, I found out yesterday and um, literally used it this morning to try it out. It's called Soluto, as in solution, but they mm. cut it off. I don't know. It's as close as I can get. And basically, um, I've got a laptop, and it's been booting really, really slow. It, it seems like take forever to get to a point in Windows where I can actually start um, using it. So what you do is you install this program. And then you reboot your machine. You want to go in here? Okay. And, um, excuse me, just a sec here, futzing with screen. There we go. Um, you, you install this, then you reboot your machine, and what it actually does is it times how long your computer takes to boot and pays attention to what is happening during the boot process, all the software that's mm -hmm. being loaded up, and how long each piece of software takes to actually load. Wow. Okay. And this laptop of mine took four minutes and five seconds to completely boot up. Wow. Okay. Nice. Now, that doesn't mean, like, I saw my desktop after, like, mm -hmm. two minutes, but then there was, like, another two minutes worth of stuff. Still things going on in the Loading now. on that was preventing me from working. So it timed it out at four minutes and five seconds, and then it gives me a chart of all of the programs that are loaded up, that are loaded up during boot, and breaks them into three categories. Stuff you could probably definitely get rid of. Um, stuff that you might want to think about and the stuff you're stuck with. Like if you don't boot with this stuff, you know, Windows doesn't work. Um, and I was able to then look through those first two categories and decide to actually turn some stuff off or just say, you know what, um, delay this. Like I automatically run screenshot software on my computer all the time because I, I do so much documentation. Well, I thought, well, Instead of loading it at boot, I can tell it, well, you know what, delay that. Boot up my computer, let it run, then wait a little while, and then load that up. I don't need it immediately. Mm -hmm. And I actually shaved my boot time down to about 2.15. Wow. Okay, and it just sets that all up, and then you reboot again, and it runs the timer, and, it, and you, can, you can watch the little clock tick off to see exactly how long um, your computer takes. So um, not for everything. I mean, if you have a really old PC, it's going to take a long time to boot. It's not going to solve that problem. But, um, you know, public machines, you probably don't load a lot. But if you've got that laptop, you've got that desktop, it just seems to be taking forever to boot these days, you might want to uh, run this piece of software and take a look and see what it, uh, see if you might be able to improve that boot time. And uh, it's free. And it's free. Hmm. And it's Windows only. So uh, not Mac oriented. And I tried it this morning, and it works. So uh, just something to think about for a particular situation. Um, switch gears here a little bit. Uh, these are some instructions, and it, it's long. If you print this out, it's like five or six pages long. But um, it's how to take an old router and turn it into what's called a, a Wi-Fi repeater. So for those of you in libraries that offer public Wi-Fi, maybe you've got some dead zones in your building, or you've got some really uh, areas with weak signals. You can take one of your older routers, um, and it supports a lot of different brands, and you can actually do some things to it software-wise so that it will actually repeat your Wi-Fi signal and boost it and add extra range to it. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the one old Wi-Fi router I had in my house work. doesn't work on that one. Um, but if you got one of these Linksys blue boxes floating around, uh, it definitely will work with that. Uh, like I said, the instructions are pretty detailed. They are pretty long. Uh, they do involve updating the firmware 
uh, on your router, which is the software that's built into the machine. Um, but um, I did understand all the instructions, and it, it should work, and all the comments say it worked pretty well. Um, you know, but uh, give yourself a good half hour to, to at least to set aside to read the instructions and try to pull this off. But just want to throw it out there. If you know, you can buy one of these things for you know thirty bucks. Now, yeah. If, if that solves your dead zone issues in your building, that uh, might be a, a cheaper way to go to boost the signal instead of adding some other equipment. So you know, just an idea. Ah, uh, back to my list here. Um, ooh, this one. Okay, if you run Firefox after this, go find this page off of Boing Boing and install this. Okay, um, this is a plugin for Firefox that will automatically, on a lot of websites, switch you over to a secure connection. Okay, especially if you're on Wi-Fi. This is that HTTPS. This is that when you log into your banking or when you log into Gmail, you want to have that secure connection so nobody can read what's going on between your computer and the other computer. Especially important in Wi-Fi, also very important on uh, landline machines. Uh, literally all you do to install it is you bring up this page in Firefox and you click this button here that says click here to encrypt the web. And it will say, do you want to install this? You say yes, it's a plugin and it works and it works beautifully. Um, from that point forward, whenever you go to Gmail, whenever you go to a whole bunch of other websites, you will automatically get an encrypted connection uh, in your browser. So actually, I would highly recommend this. If, if Firefox is the browser you're using on your public machines, install this. Give your patrons that kind of added level of extra security um, that they don't even have to ask for. They just have it. Um, if you have this on a, on a laptop and you connect to Wi-Fi a lot and you use Firefox, you want to install this. I highly recommend it. I've installed it, but I generally use Chrome. So this almost makes me want to go back to Firefox just a little bit, but I, I'm still uh, loving the Chrome. So uh, highly recommend it. If you do one thing out of this whole session, do this one right here. Oh, what's next? Ah, uh, yes. OCLC Connection Client. Um, I, yeah, well, okay. I, I'm not here to talk about OCLC. I'm only here to talk about Connection Client. Um, basically, if you buy a new computer these days, chances are it's going to be a 64-bit version of Windows. I, go back through our archives. I've talked about this with Diane and other people. We've talked about should I buy 32-bit, should I buy 64-bit, blah, 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 blah. Generally, I recommend 64-bit. This is what we have in my house. Well, my wife is a contract cataloger, so she has to use Connection Client. And the problem was is that connection client would not install on 64-bit systems. End of story. It just says, sorry, I won't install. Mm -hmm. OCLC has gotten their act together. They have released. Fi okay, finally, as Krista says, mm -hmm. I, I won't, I've blogged about this personally. Um, they have released a new version, uh, connection client version 2.2. You only need to install this if you have a 64-bit version of Windows. You do not need to upgrade it to it for any other reason than that. So now, instead of running a virtual machine with Windows XP on my wife's computer so she can run Connection Client, I now can just install Connection Client for her, and it works. So if you're thinking about getting new staff computers for your catalogers, they use Connection Client. If this was an issue, this issue has no been longer. solved. Yeah. Yes, and I have installed it. It seems to work just fine. We've noticed no issues. Um, you know, the fact that it even installed was the, the plus. So, you know, I just assumed it, it's worked. My wife hasn't complained about it yet. So, 64-bit um, version of Connection Client is now available. Oh, what else have I got? I've always got a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, this one, Nitro PDF Reader. Um, this actually, I should have talked to Krista about this yesterday. I forgot about it. Um, Adobe Reader, Adobe Acrobat Reader doesn't do much. It displays, it rotates, it resizes. This is a free PDF reader that will actually do a whole heck of a lot of other things, such as pulling text out of PDFs, allowing you to type directly onto the page. Yes, I know. I completely <laughs> forgot about this. Krista had a, okay, a separate it issue. Way. Yes. Uh, you know, there's there's an example it just shows on the screen about um, changing or, you know, s inserting a graphic of your signature, things like that. 
if you're looking to do a little more with your PDFs but don't want to or don't need to purchase the full Acrobat Reader, you might want to try this. should uh, solve maybe some of your problems for you. And it's free. And it looks, there's even an iPad app it looked like. <laughs> Um, a few others I want to uh, throw in here. Browser plugin check. This works in Internet Explorer. This works in Firefox, and this works in Chrome. Even though it is from the Mozilla Foundation, this is a little site you go to, and what it will do is it will look at your browser's plugins, and if able, it will tell you whether your plugins are up to date or not. So for this example, it's noticed I do have the Java plugin, I have the Silverlight plugin, I have the Flash plugin, I have the Acrobat plugin, I have the QuickTime plugin, yada, 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 and they are all up to date. If there was a newer version available, it would give me a button that says, this is out of date, click here to upgrade it. Really, really handy. Now, it doesn't cover everything. For example, here are three that basically say, I know you've got them, but I can't tell what version they are, and since I can't tell what version they are, I can't tell you if they're up to date. Hmm. So what you can do is you can click this research button. It will kind of take you through a process to try to figure out what version you have and compare that to what the current version is. So, you know, it's a little bit of security because usually they update the plugin because of security issues. Hmm. So um, just something you can quickly check Does out. Firefox do this automatically sometimes? Because I'll get a message <coughs> sometimes in Firefox saying we found a new... If if the organization has pushed the update, okay. yes, um, this might catch some of them earlier. Okay. Uh, cool. um, and not not all plugins will push updates at all. Mm. It just installs once and you're done. So just kind of an extra step, mm -hmm. maybe something to take a look at. Um, wouldn't hurt to run it once. Yeah. Just just to see what's going on. Um, this is something I like to do on all of my computers a lot, is make sure I'm using the latest version of everything. That's a good way to remember what the heck did I all install on here. Well, that too, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I remember I, all the plugins I've put on. And, and this computer has got a really short list. These are pretty right. much all the defaults. Uh, these, I mean, you know, some of my computers at home, you know, I've got a, a four-page list of plugins I've installed in, in, in my browsers. So um, just, you know, some things to think about. Okay, our internet connections being a bit. Once you close some of the Omaha stuff. Yeah. Oh, plug-in check went through like twelve screens. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Kind of slow. Close some of these up too here. Um, Zillisoft, I think that's how you say it. That's the name of the company. The free online video converter. Mm -hmm. Um, this may not apply to some of you. This may apply to some of you. I literally had to do this the other day. I got a video. It was a QuickTime video, and I wanted to embed it in a PowerPoint presentation. Well, PowerPoint doesn't allow you to embed QuickTime video. You can embed AVI. You can embed uh, Windows Media Video. You can embed you know all these other versions except for the version I had it in. So I needed to convert it from QuickTime to Windows Media Video. And so literally all I had to do was I walked through this. I added my file. I said I wanted to output it as, in this case, um, I must have done it as an AVI. And it will actually also convert a video to just an audio file if you want. So if you want just the audio out of something, you enter your email address and you click convert. It uploads your video to the system. It processes. Now, that process, I've seen it take up to five hours. Okay? I've also seen it take ten minutes. It really depends on how busy the system is and how big your video file is. And it can't be over 100 megabytes, by the way. You click that convert, you wait, you will get an email that says your conversion is done. Here is the link, and you download your converted video file. Nice. Very nice. Okay. And so far I've had, um, I think with this one, there's lots of other ones out here. I just find this one's kind of the simplest to use on the screen there. Um, but I, I do believe I've had a 100% success rate. So. Uh, you know, if you need a video file, one version converted to another, check out the online converter here. <coughs> Zillisoft. They also make software you can buy that will do a lot more and, and things like that. But, you know, they got a free kind of online, quick and easy sort of uh, do that. All right. This, oh, I, I love this program. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, Nine Night Easy PC Setup. 
I had to upgrade a laptop recently. And I went from Windows Vista to Windows 7. And in this case, I, did, I couldn't do the upgrade for various reasons. I had to scrub the hard drive and reinstall the operating system from scratch. Ugh. Which, you know, serious pain in the butt, <laughs> but gives you a nice clean install, fresh machine, you know, nice. But, you know, I had programs on there that I was going to have to reinstall. Um, I... We just got my stepdaughter. She's going off to college in next week, and we just got her a laptop. And I knew there was a bunch of software I was going to need to install on her computer. And if you've ever been through this process, how fun is it to search and go to two dozen different websites, download two dozen different programs, and then hit install on each one and have to sit there and click next, 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 yes, next, blah, 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 blah. Pain in the butt. This program has totally changed how I think about this process. <laughs> you literally go through this list and it starts with browsers and messaging programs and media programs and imaging. There's dozens of programs on here. Okay? Security software, runtimes, other programs, utilities, compression. You check all the ones you want. Okay? So I was going to say, well, you know what? On this computer, I want Chrome and I need to go install Skype and I use uh, Messenger here, and I do iTunes and Hulu, and I edit stuff in Audacity, and I go through this whole list, and then you click this wonderful little Get Installer button once you've done this. And it downloads a small executable program. And you run that program, and it's going to look something like this screenshot up here on the top. You run that program, and this program will go out, download the latest version of all the programs you checked and install them without you having to click a single button. Cool. <laughs> you can walk away, make a cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah. walk away, <laughs> make a cup of coffee. As long as you have an internet connection, it's going to work. Now, it installs everything with the defaults. So if you know you want to do something like, for some reason, this one particular program, you know you want it installed on the D drive instead of the C drive or something like that. Mm -hmm then you need to go through the process manually. But if you just want dozens of programs installed, Standard, yeah. I mean, it literally took, I think, the whole thing on, on Sarah's laptop, it took maybe 30 minutes to install a couple dozen programs. I mean, it was, it was amazing. Nice. And then she, her Skype was there, her Firefox was there, her, her uh, PDF reader software was there. It was wonderful, saved me so much time. This is a definite must-use if you're the type of person who sets up new computers. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, it doesn't have everything, but it does also have somewhere in here is a suggest a piece of software. Yeah, so it's to work on yeah. starting so, it. So it's like if we don't have it, we'll see if we can do it sort of thing. And it'll get you the latest version too, which is, you know, a definite plus. How are we doing on time here? Okay, we started 10 minutes yeah. late, so yeah, we're, we're going to keep, keep going a little bit. Um... I'm going to jump around here a little bit. Uh, I mentioned converters before. Uh, this is uh, what I was working with Krista yesterday, although a different version <laughs> of what I was working with. Um, oh, and this is PDF to PowerPoint. I'm sorry. Um, this converter, we talked about a video converter before. This one is somebody sends you a PowerPoint presentation, but it's in PDF. Yeah, I know. That bugs me, too. I'm like, I, give me the, the PowerPoint file. Don't, the PowerPoint. don't give me the it, PDF. Yeah. Well, this will take a PDF and convert it back to PowerPoint for you. Oh, I'm getting that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you literally upload your PDF. You click, uh, you enter your email address just like you did on the video one, and in a little bit it will send you a link and you download your PowerPoint file. Now, it might not, it, it will be a PPT. It might not be exactly each individual thing is editable like they originally created it, but it will be more editable than it was as I a PDF. I find it easier to work with the format in how they a person originally created it than in something else because it's it's just mm -hmm. it's clunkier when you're in the PDF. You're like, wait, this isn't it's a PowerPoint. I should be able to go advance to this yeah. or do something different, make it a yeah. little. Yeah, you won't get animations back. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, if that's, you know, if, if there was a video embedded, the video will suddenly appear again. It's but still coming from a PDF. For back some people, to a and this may, you know, yeah. make you cringe, but some people do print out their PowerPoints to view or to take notes mm -hmm. on or whatever. And if someone has sent it in a PDF and each slide is one page, oh, I hate that. 
Right. Actually, you know, true. If you convert it back to, to a PowerPoint, PowerPoint, I can you put can print six slides on a page if I want to, or three, or however reason. many fit. And then it takes up less paper, and it's just more room to write, and it's just, I just don't understand the whole making a PDF in the first yeah. place, but that's just me. So. Well, you make it a PDF because pretty much everybody can open PDFs, and there are three, <laughs> three people okay, in the yes. world who can't open PowerPoints at this point. So, <laughs> you know, just in case you, you're sending to one of those three people. Um, so, okay, we're getting a little snarky in here. Sorry. That's all right. Um, <laughs> no, you saved me lots of time. I love it. Yes. Okay, here's another tool. I find this really cool. Now, I, I've already mentioned, <coughs> excuse me, that I, 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 I make a lot of screenshots, okay? Mm -hmm. And I have software I've purchased to you make snag screenshots. It. Snag it, yes. Yeah. Um, in fact, I, I use it for my writing a lot, so I, I and I am going to change the size of this to lose that animation there because that's going to kill our bandwidth. Um, but... And that software I've purchased will allow me to do a lot of things that just hitting like all print screen won't do. Mm. Okay. Yes. So what if you can't afford the software and in a particular situation you want to create a screenshot of a web page, but that web page scrolls. Mm. Okay. Now the software I spent 50 bucks on will do this for me. Okay. But not everybody has that. Not everybody needs that. What you do here is you put in the URL of the web page you want. And I'm, I'm only going to go so far with this process. Okay? And you click Take Screenshot. And after a couple of seconds, what it will do is it will do a screenshot of the full page as if you, you it scrolled and give you back, I think it's a JPEG. Okay? Um, I will admit I've had mixed success. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and I have yet to figure out what the cause of it not working is. Right? It could be just a glitchy system. It could be that particular web page. I don't know. Um, but if you need a screenshot of a long multi-screen web page, here is a free option for you that will probably work. How, mm -hmm. How's that for, for an answer? It's the only one I found. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you know, if I find a better one, I'll point people to it. But at the moment, this is pretty much it. So um, you know, little cool, little utility available to you. All right, let me just show you one or two more here. Yeah, let me try to, there's my screenshot. Um, and actually, I'm gonna, these other two, I'm not going to talk about those. Um, sometimes I bookmark things and then I decide, you know, not worth it. Um, this one's cool. Uh, you can say email, text, or at reply. So you can get an email, you can get an, a text message, or you can get an at reply via Twitter when a certain website is up. Ah. So let's say, you know, OCLC is down. Okay. And you know what? I want a text message at my phone number. Excuse me if I don't put my phone number in there. <laughs> um, and tell it that I am, I would have to actually find my service provider here. Probably be Verizon. Not a pager, PCS, yeah, PCS. They've got a <coughs> lot of services. Yes, they do. I mean, it's worldwide. I mean, email's probably the easiest one. Email me when OCLC.org is up again at, and you put your email address in there, and you click, okay, thanks. And then you just sit back. So you've got that, way. OCLC is down. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Does that ever happen? I don't know. You don't know anymore? Okay, yeah. OCLC yeah. never goes down. But when it does... Um, you can set up this little notice that says, send me an email when it's back up again. And what this service will do is it will check. Now, I'm not sure. I think it's like once a minute, but don't hold me to that. It's, it's pretty darn often. And that the moment... definitely get it back to you more, mm -hmm. a lot quicker than the service itself saying, oh, we're back. We're again. back up. Or you don't have to sit there and go refresh, right. refresh, 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 or, you know, whatever. So, and I love the fact that it's email, text message, or Twitter reply. So really, really handy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if there's that website you really got to have back up again and it's down, this will notify you when it's back up again. Cool. I think that's really, really handy. I've used it a couple of times. So, all right. Um, that's that's my list. That's, cool. that's a lot. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. We didn't do this last month because of uh, oh, we, had with, a we, we had a full interview with with Tim Spaulding. So uh, I, I had some extra stuff kind of left over from last month. 
anybody have, um, nobody's come up with any questions while Michael was speaking, but does anybody have any questions for him while we are still here? Hit me. <laughs> Not literally. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Not on video. Um, I don't see anything coming in. No, okay. if that's fine, that is fine. Um, and you know, if again, I will stress, we have we have some people who haven't uh, you know been on these before. Don't worry about you know you missed a URL, you missed a, the the name of something. Uh, we will on the recording, you will get an email about it. Yes. There will be a link. All of these to links will be sent to you. A delicious page, yes, with all of this content on it. Um, so including the one or two things I, I didn't actually get into all that much. Mm -hmm. Uh, mostly due to time issues, yeah. but no uh, you know, experiment for yourself. Find the two that, that weren't on there, um, and I will try to remember to uh, link to Blippy, that that service that uh, or Boopsy, Boopsy, excuse me, Boopsy. Blippy is a completely different service. <laughs> does something very different, um, but Boopsy, we will link to that if that sounded interested uh, interesting to you. It's a, uh, what Omaha will be using to uh, kind of create their i pod iPad versions of their catalog mm -hmm. uh, through that. And I do believe OCLC is actually involved in that also. There was a WorldCat uh, oh, yeah. connection They're in there somewhere. They're doing all things so. of putting WorldCat anywhere yep. and everywhere they can. Absolutely. So, yeah. You know, maybe we should get one of the, the super geeks we know from OCLC to talk about future stuff. Mm -hmm. We know one or two, actually. Karen. Yeah. Yeah. Karen? Yeah, yeah, Karen. Okay. We'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's an idea. Planning future sessions. Yes. As you, as you, and speaking of future sessions, I already know, we already oh, know, who we're going to interview next month, which is July 28th. Uh, we were talking to Bobby Newman about library transliteracy. And you know what? I'm intentionally, what does, I, what does that mean? I'm kind of intentionally not knowing. I want to find out from her. Uh, she talks about it a lot on Twitter. I know there is a library transliteracy blog, mm -hmm. um, and so I'm going to kind of um, play the, the noob next week mm -hmm. and, and, and ask her what all that is about. It sounds uh, really interesting based on the, the few things that I have heard, so I uh, mm -hmm. highly encourage you yeah. to tune in for so that. So that'll be a month from now. That, as, he, as Michael said, that's our next Tech Talk, July 28th, the last Friday in July. Um, and next week, hope you join us, our, just to give a plug for next week's, is um, Nebraska Libraries host Primetime Family Reading Time, which is a family reading program designed for low-end families. Um, Erica Hamilton, who is the state coordinator of this program from the Nebraska Humanities Council, will be with us to talk about this family reading program. Oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah. So we'll hope you join us then. So thank you very much. Do you have any more? I don't think anyone has any questions. Nothing's come up. No. Thank you very much for joining us. And this recording will be available later today, maybe tomorrow. You'll get an email, and we'll send it out to you, and they'll be up on our website. So thank you very much. Great. Bye-bye.